So today we're going to be talking about 11 questions a narcissist could never answer honestly. So we all know that narcissists tend to be lacking in empathy. They tend to be lacking in the ability to be honest. They lack self-awareness. They lack the ability to feel what other people feel in the sense that they want to understand how you feel. They might know how you feel, but there's a step in empathy that requires that we have a proper emotional response to how other people feel. So you can know how someone else feels, almost like have this cognitive awareness around what someone else is going through. But then we also need to have the ability to respond emotionally with appropriate emotions to how someone else is feeling. So we know that narcissists are empathy impaired. We generally know that they are antisocial, that they can be grandiose, not always, because you can also happen upon a narcissist who is a vulnerable shy narcissist who relies on sob stories to manipulate you. They rely on basically understanding you and figuring you out and figuring out what makes you tick and then tapping into those emotions for the purpose of manipulating you into their lair. So let's say someone you know has recently passed away and a narcissist at work notices that you're all broken up about someone passing away. And so the following day they come in with a sob story about an aunt or a grandmother that has passed away and they're expecting you to have the same type of emotional response to feel vulnerable and to have this empathy and sympathy for the person at work, the same type of empathy and reaction that you had when you heard about the original death or the person that you knew who passed away. And perhaps they want to pull you into um, a narcissistic abuse cycle. They want to make you their target. Another thing that a shy, vulnerable narcissist might do is just act helpless, like just refuse to take care of themselves. And it's, you know, they feel like, you know, the world's out to get them. You just don't understand their pain. You don't understand their situation. So their attitude is very poor. Their mental attitude is very poor and they're angry that you're not taking care of them. And so you'll see this with narcissists across the board that their, their attitude is very poor towards life. It's either grandiose or it's, it's helpless and you need to take care of me and they're entitled to expect you to praise them and or take care of them. So I put together a list of questions to help really crystallize what it is that narcissists would have a difficult time answering honestly. And so I made a list, so I wanna share that with you. So the first question is, what are your greatest weaknesses? So what are you struggling with? So when it comes to a narcissist, narcissist pretty much believes that they're handling things pretty, pretty well because they lack self-awareness and self-reflection, even though they're aware of self. When I mean self-awareness, the ability to observe the way we act or the person that we are reacts in time and space, how we respond to other people, where we have the ability to be objective and to detach from our behavior. And in that space, we're free to change our behavior. So narcissists don't do that. They're very primal. So their emotions are activated and they look to blame, to guilt, to shame, to retaliate against whoever their target is. So there's this primal egoic response or emotion. And then there's this egoic response, a lot of reactivity. And sometimes it's calculated when we're talking about a psychopath that this, this retaliation is actually calculated versus instinctive and reactive in the moment. And so they're not going to, in most cases, be able to tell you what their weaknesses are because in their head, they're pretty awesome. And so that's the first question. The next question is, how do you handle failure? Now, to a narcissist, it's win, 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 win. So it's either win, annihilate you, step on the head of everybody else in the office to get what they want, it could be, you know, to have an affair and get away with it, win, 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 convince the spouse that they're crazy, win, 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 win. Or it could be on the covert side of the equation, it could be to win in the sense that they're getting you to take care of them. So in terms of handling a failure, when you're talking to a narcissist, there's no ability to really consider that they've failed because in their head, it's 
win, 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 win. So failure is not an option. So they wouldn't be able to answer that question honestly. The next question, what do you think you need to work on? Right? What things do you need to work on? If you're talking to someone who is self-reflective, who is humble and who understands that they're not perfect, there's this general ability to acknowledge when you've done something wrong and to know that you're a work in progress. And if you're a healthy person, this doesn't freak you out. But this idea that a narcissist has qualities that they need to work on is foreign to them because they think they're pretty awesome. They think everyone else has the problem. I remember when my dad was taking care of my mom when she was ill and I confronted him and I said, dad, you're not a caretaker. You're not managing her sugar, right? Her sugar values are all over the place. You need to monitor her sugar if you're going to be her caretaker. And he just hung the phone up in my face. He was so angry and so irate that I suggested that he wasn't a caretaker rather than saying, you know, it's true. I don't know much about diabetes. I don't know much about managing my own blood sugar, let alone your mother's blood sugar and all the health problems she has. Instead, he was enraged and he said, how dare you suggest that I don't know how to take care of your mother. So in his head, you know, he had nothing that he needed to work on. And this was across the board. Another question, are you nice? Right? So most people will say, mm, you know, sometimes, not all the time. I think I can be nicer. You know, I can be reactive sometimes. And, you know, if you catch me on a bad day, you know, I'm just into whatever it is I'm going through. And I, I don't mean to be that way, but, you know, I have my good days and I have my bad days. So a narcissist might say, of course I'm nice, right? Because in their head, they're not doing, thinking that they're doing anything wrong. So when they're hanging out with you, you should be grateful so that in their head, they're hanging out with you. So therefore they're nice. They come home from work, maybe three hours later, but Hey, at least they showed up. They're entitled to treat you that way. You're supposed to be praising them. You're supposed to be, you know, scuttering around the house, making them happy. So in their head, yeah, they're being nice just by hanging out with you. Another question, do you work well with people? So a narcissist will think, yeah, sure. I work well with people, even though they honestly don't. In all reality, they don't work well with people. Why? Because they're about dominance. They're about power. They're about control. They're about manipulation. They're about deception. They're about getting away with things and feeling really, really good in their skin about being able to deceive other people and get away with something. So a narcissist will answer the question, sure, I get along with people, but if you are an observer, if you know this person, you'll know that that's absolutely dishonest and it's not true. Next question. How would those who knew you describe you? So if you're a narcissist, you might think everybody loves me. Everyone thinks I'm funny. Everybody thinks I'm the life of the party. Everyone thinks I'm awesome. Everyone thinks I'm the kindest person in the world. And meanwhile, family and friends are like, what's she smoking? You know, like what, what is this person thinking? Like the kids don't talk to them. They're, they're on their seventh marriage, right? They can't hold down a job. You know, people really don't like them. If they've maintained any type of success in the, in the work field, people don't want to be around them unless they're narcissists, right? And they're benefiting from being around this major narcissist. So, but the people that are more healthy and who are responding appropriately to the actions and the attitudes and the poor behavior of a narcissist, they will have a completely different mindset or perception of the narcissist. So that's a question that a narcissist will not be able to answer honestly. The next question, what kinds of people do you admire? Now this will trip a narcissist, narcissist up because narcissists are at the top of the food chain. In other words, like, what do you mean? People are admire me. I don't admire people. People are admiring me. So they might make up an answer or they might come up with some, you know, frivolous response to you because they know that you expect an answer, but they will struggle a little bit because in their head, they're at the top. They're worried about people who are admiring them. And in their head, in the fantasy that they hold about themselves, everyone admires them. You know, narcissists oftentimes are not as attractive as they think they are. They are not as intelligent as they think they are. They are not as capable as they think they are. It's a fantasy and this fantasy protects them from feeling vulnerable. So when you ask a narcissist, who do you admire? Oftentimes, depending on the level of narcissism, they will make up some name, but in reality, they may think that they're better than that person 
or they might be angry that this person is enjoying a certain level of notoriety and they haven't yet. So they're always going to feel like that should have been me. Like the world doesn't know how amazing I am. And they get frustrated when they don't feel like they're getting the accolades that they deserve and desire. And if you sit back, if you observe a narcissist long enough, you'll hear this language that they're angry that someone else is experiencing success and they aren't. So even though they might tell you, yeah, I, am, I admire this one, you know, there is a very high likelihood that in the mind of a narcissist is some anger and resentment and frustration that other people don't see them like this other person or that this other person has the notoriety that they themselves believe that they deserve. They deserve. Another, Another question. What is the worst thing you've ever gotten away with? Now, narcissists will might come up with some frivolous thing. Oh, you know, I, I stole a bar, bar of candy when I was seven years old and I got away with it. And that's the worst thing I've ever done. A narcissist will not answer this question, honestly, for a number of reasons. Lots of times narcissists don't think they're doing anything wrong. Right? So if, if they're cheating on their spouse, if they're abusing their children, if they're hurting people at work, you know, if they're just really difficult to be around, they rage at people, they criticize people, they put people down, they minimize people, they're discarding people, you know, that's all par for the course. They're not really acknowledging that this is a bad thing to do because you deserve to be treated this way. So their mind won't register, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And so the answer that you'll get is going to be frivolous, right? And so they cannot answer this question honestly. And if they do have any level of ability, any ability to recognize what they've done wrong, they're not going to admit it. And so they will dance around certain ideas, they will make things up, um, and they will not give you the correct answer because the things that a narcissist does are absolutely horrendous. Lie to people, steal from people, cheat on people, minimize gaslight people, you know the deal. But there's no accountability. And so for me to answer this question honestly, I have to have the ability to be objective. I have to have the ability to have self-awareness. I have to be humble enough to recognize that my actions have actually harmed someone. So I need the self-awareness to actually acknowledge that so I can be accountable. And so that's not a question a narcissist will be able to answer honestly. The next question, what situations have you gone through that have taught you about the gift of humility? Now, this is where a narcissist's brain will malfunction because narcissists are not humble. If they were humble, they wouldn't be narcissists. Now to be humble, you need to have some level of guilt and guilt is something that is an emotion that we experience because of something that we've done and we recognize it goes against our moral code. And so if you're someone who feels guilty for yelling at your children or guilty for flirting with the guy at work, you know, or guilty for saying something to someone you never should have, this is an emotion that will help you curb your behavior in the future. Shame is another emotion. That's a completely different emotion, although people tend to get them confused. Shame comes from the outside. So in my book, uh, Codependent Now What? I have this sweater of shame exercise. I call it SOS, SOS. And what I ask people to do is to put on this sweater of shame and you can, if you want, get really creative and you can make labels and pin the labels to the sweater. What are the kinds of names that people have called you? What are the types of experiences that you've gone through that have made you feel ashamed, right? And just snap these labels to the sweater and then imagine that you're understanding that that shame is something that's given to you. It's something that's put on you from the outside. It's not generated from within. It's something someone gave you, like a sweater. And just slip that sweater off, put it in a box and slide it across the room. That's you taking off this sweater of shame. Now, in order to heal and in order to have humility, someone has to have the ability to feel guilt, to feel remorse. And I can tell you that this is something that in my experience, the major narcissists that I have lived with, um, they do not accept guilt. They rebuke guilt. They turn the tables. It's always going to be your fault. You know, again, you know, I remember, again, I'm talking about my dad and that's probably because he just recently passed away due to COVID. Um, and, but he's on my mind. And what's coming to my mind talking about this is when 
the first time, the first birthday that he moved a few states away, I sent him a birthday card and then I called him on his birthday and he was a little bit cold on the phone. And I was surprised by that. And I said, you know, dad, what's up? And he's like, I know why you sent me that mushy birthday card. I said, because I miss you. It's the first birthday that you're going to be in another state since I'm born that I'm not going to see you for your birthday. He says, no, you're trying to make me feel guilty. And I thought, wow, that's how you see this. You see me sending you this birthday card as a way to manipulate you. And I was just, it changed me forever. It's one of those moments that you have with your parent or your spouse or a friend or even a child where you realize like, wow, this person has this perception of me that is so backwards and there isn't anything that I can do about it. So definitely a lot of projection on my father's part because he was someone that manipulated people's emotions. Confirmation bias. He had this opinion and there wasn't anything that I could do and say to change it. And so in order for a narcissist to be able to answer this question fairly and objectively, they would have to be able to experience remorse and guilt. You cannot be humble unless you experience remorse and unless you experience guilt. So that's not a question a narcissist would be able to answer honestly. What do you think you need forgiveness for is another question. Again, so in order to imagine that you need forgiveness is to say, I know that I have hurt someone. I know that I have done someone wrong. I know that my actions have caused another human being pain and I feel terrible about that. I'm having a visceral somatic experience tied to this idea that my actions hurt another person. So this idea that a narcissist would need forgiveness from anyone is, is just it's bogus in their mind. I don't need to be forgiven for anything because I've never done anything wrong. If a narcissist humiliates another person or is angry and rages at another person, the thinking is, yeah, but she did this. Yeah, but he said that. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. It's never, I responded this way. I had this visceral reaction. This is my trigger and I need to work on it and I need to understand what I need to understand so I get out of this loop. And if you have someone in your experience that aggravates you, irritates you, enrages you, you have to ask yourself whether or not you should keep that person in your life. But if you are in a situation where your, per your perceptions and your wounds turn a friend into an enemy, only you can figure that out and that is something that we all need to really be conscious and cognitively aware of because it's a sneaky egoic defense mechanism and there's no need to be ashamed of ourselves, right? We have to learn to detach and in the space of detachment is the only place that the seed of self-compassion can grow because if I recognize I've done something wrong to someone and I don't forgive myself and I don't detach from it and I don't give myself space to learn from it, then I stay stuck in that loop of shame. And the original wound that is causing that trigger never has the opportunity to come up and to be processed and healed. And so the ability to recognize when you've hurt someone and the ability to ask for forgiveness is a very beautiful experience when you are on the recovery path and your soul is evolving. A narcissist doesn't think they've ever done anything wrong. And if they're upset, it's because you upset them. It's not their fault. Then the last question is, why were you fired? And so a narcissist can't answer that question, honestly, because it's never going to be a narcissist's fault for why an, an employer says, I'm done with you. Or why an employer says, three strikes and you're out. Or why an employer says, we need boundaries around here and you're not pulling your weight or you've done X, Y, and Z and you know, you are just, you just can't work here anymore. There is always going to be a reason why someone got fired, why they got arrested, why they got drunk, why they raged, why they did this, why they cheated, right? Why they stole the car, why they robbed the bank, why they don't have a job, why they can't get themselves together. Be again, because it's such a poor attitude. And you know, the one thing that you can start changing today, regardless of where you are on the spectrum, that's for free, is your attitude. Because your attitude will 
is the, your motivator. In other words, like if you have a poor attitude about recovery, then you're not going to recover. If you don't think it's possible, it's your attitude that's really cutting you off at the knees before you even gain any mo momentum or traction. And so it's important that we recognize when we're dealing with someone with high narcissistic traits who gets fired, who, you know, goes to jail and who is just, there's always something going on in their life. They're getting divorced again, um, or they're cheating on their spouse again, right? They're consistently getting into trouble. You'll never hear the person answer the question honestly. And so the last question a narcissist will not be able to answer honestly is, why did you get fired? There's always going to be an excuse because there's a lack of accountability. There's a lack of self-responsibility. There's a lack of the ability to be self-observing. There's very little remorse for what a narcissist does. And without the ability to be self-reflective and honest with oneself, it is impossible to be honest with others. Namaste everybody, my name is Lisa A. Romano, I'm the Breakthrough Life Coach and Best Selling Author. And if you'd like to learn more about how you can break through codependent belief systems, the types of belief systems, the limiting beliefs that are keeping you stuck, check out the 12-week Breakthrough Coaching Program. I'm now offering this coaching program on demand for 50% off, as well as live. So you can wait for a live launch and work with me and my life coaches inside the 12-week Breakthrough Coaching Program. And if you'd like to learn more about my membership site, go to www.lisaaromano.com. And for those of you who would like to listen to one of my books for free, all you have to do is click one of the links in the description box. And don't forget to check out my Loving the Self Affirmation app, available now in the App Store. Namaste, everybody, as I bow to the love and the light that is absolutely in you. And when you're out and about, don't forget to think. A narcissist doesn't want you to think. A narcissist wants you to react. Stay out of the mud. Bye for now. If you love this content, check out the next video. Bye for now. I really chased after her approval. I really thought that I needed her permission to live. I really thought that her acceptance and her validation was everything. Like I needed it, like I needed air. But as an adult, I know that I'm divine at my core. And I know that I don't need that person's validation. I have to seek my own validation. I am enough. So the adult relationship is an opportunity for you to cut that cord. So when you say to someone, I accept your faulty perception of me, what you're doing is saying namaste to the past, which you're not responsible for what happened to you when you were a child. You're not, you were powerless. You came here like everyone else to learn from these physical experiences and to evolve mentally, emotionally, cognitively, and consciously, and to transcend the ego and live in the higher realms, right? To live in a more spiritual realm, to raise the mental body so that we're able to see things more objectively, more rationally, and more logically, and with a lot less emotional drama, if you will, or an emotional reactivity. As long as I'm still emotionally reacting to a narcissist, I'm not healed. And as long as I'm, I continue to react to triggers, I've got work to do.